Here's something you don't see every day. A modern Japanese kerosene heater here in the U.S. I was able to get a deputy service to ship one of these to me, and as you can imagine, the shipping fees were quite high. Now, even after you have one of these in your possession, there's still a couple of challenges to actually being able to use it. First and foremost is being able to power it. As it is a Japanese appliance, it requires 100 volts at 50 or 60 hertz, and this particular model requires 650 watts during the kerosene preheat cycle. This means you'll need a bucking or step-down transformer to convert the 120 volts used in the U.S. down to the 100 volts required by a Japanese appliance. This particular model I got off of eBay for $30 plus shipping, and it's a 1 kilowatt rated unit that outputs 100.9 volts. There are also Japanese voltage converters available for sale on Amazon, and a 1 kilowatt rated unit will run you around $100. The other thing that you need for the cedar, obviously, is the kerosene fuel. Now, depending on where you live, you may be able to buy kerosene at a local gas station from a pump or from a fuel oil supplier. The most expensive place to get kerosene from is your local hardware store like Ace, True Value, Lowe's, and Home Depot. They'll sell it generally in these one-gallon containers that cost anywhere from $10 to $20 a gallon. I bought some of this clean heat kerosene alternative to try it out, and in fact it is quite odor free during the operation of the heater, and there's only a very small amount of odor when the heater first starts up. I still would not recommend this fuel simply because of the price. The heater holds 1.3 gallons of fuel, and at roughly $12 a gallon that I paid for this, it's just not a cost effective fuel for this heater. The other thing that you'll want for one of these heaters or any fuel burning device in your house is a carbon monoxide alarm. You can get one of these basic battery operated models for roughly $20 and it's good cheap insurance. Now even though the heater does have built in air quality monitoring, you still want to have a battery operated unit just as a backup. As far as the operation of the heater goes, You've got your timer mode here, which tells the heater that you want to have it come on at the preset time that you've set with the timer. In order to put it in timer mode, you first have to turn the heater on, and then you can press timer, and then it will display what time you want it to come on at. And in that case, it was set to 4.45 a.m. To go ahead and cancel timer, you turn the power off, and it's canceled. This is your five second quick start mode. This basically runs the preheater and causes the heater to be able to fire up within five seconds of pressing the power button once it's reached its preheated cycle. I'm not 100% sure of the value of that feature or even if I've translated it correctly, but as near as I can tell, that's how it uh, operates. Now, eco mode causes the heater to shut the burner off once it has overshot the, the set point by about two degrees. This would be useful if you're using the heater in a smaller room and even once it's hit the set point, the lowest heat output that the heater is capable of still keeps raising the temperature in the room. So the eco mode will cause the burner to shut down and the heater will obviously not continue to heat the room. Now the disadvantage to eco mode is that there is a little bit of a smell when the heater shuts down and starts up. So in eco mode, while it will save fuel and allow the heater to maintain the temperature in a smaller room more accurately, there will be a bit more odor. Now your other mode you've got here is your button to switch between set clock, set timer, and then back to displaying the clock. Now the thing to remember about this is when you're in timer mode, this sets your minutes. We'll go ahead and set this to 5 a.m. and this sets your hours. And the also thing to remember here is that AM's on top, PM's on the bottom. So it is now 3.55 PM and the timer is set for 5 AM. And obviously to enable the timer, you would go ahead and press power and then timer mode, which would tell it you want it to come on at the preset time. This is child lock, um, which is easily defeated by a child that knows how to unplug the unit. It's a feature of questionable value. Then you have your extend operation button. Now the way this works is if the unit was turned on by your power button, the unit will run for three hours and then at two hours 45 minutes into the cycle, 
it will start beeping at you and if you want to keep the heater on you can press the extended operation button. Now the thing to remember about this is that you don't necessarily have to extend it for another three hours. It will also allow you to extend it for two hours or even down to one hour determining by how many times you've pressed the button. So if you only want it to run for two more hours or one more hour you can go ahead and do that or you can also when you've first turned it on as I've done here now to set the temperature that lowers it that raises it that's all there is to it and then if we want to go ahead and turn it off just do that and it's back off now when you've got the heater in timer mode it will only run for one hour before shutting itself off when it's been turned on by the timer this is a safety feature to prevent the uh, heater from consuming uh, too much oxygen in the room if you decide you want to sleep in and you don't get up to open a window. The thing to remember about the timer mode is that if you're a light sleeper it will start beeping at about 45 minutes into operation so you really don't want to set it any earlier than 45 minutes from when you plan to get up because the unit will start beeping at about 45 minutes. Overall the heater works pretty good. I wish they were able to get them over here without having to pay astronomical shipping but it is a very decent unit and compared to the models that we have here in the US it's definitely light years ahead.